I'm gonna be camping out for the night. We're gonna make a super shelter today. It's a shelter that gets really, really warm. Wow. And we'll see how I make it through the night. But all I brought... That felt good, right down my neck. But all I brought today for sleeping is a wool blanket and a cheap sleeping pad. So I'm gonna be relying on this shelter to keep me warm all night. I'm headed up to the top of this ridge over here. Whoa, a little steep. I'm up around 2,800 feet in elevation. Got a good amount of snow up here. So I'm looking for a somewhat open and flat area to camp in. These woods are a little thick. I'm gonna have a pretty big fire, so I want the area to be a little more open. So this is looking pretty good over here. plastic sheeting and mylar space blanket. This you can get at Lowe's, Home Depot, or Walmart, a few bucks. And this is just a cheap mylar blanket. And I got this at Walmart for a few bucks too. But using these together is gonna make me a really, really warm shelter. So I have to cut lots of wood, both for my shelter and making a fire. So let's go cut some branches. Corona razor tooth. This thing cuts like a champ. These two trees here, perfect spacing. I'm going to tie this to the tree, and I'm just going to use the jam knot for this. For that, I'm going to tie two knots at the end of this. Tie one like that, and do that again just below that one, but I'm going to leave that one open. And I'll take the other end of my line, pass it up through that open knot, tighten it. Now it'll act like a zip tie. And then I'll tie a stop knot to this. If you don't tie a stop knot, it's just going to work its way loose real easy. There you go. That'll stay in place. And then I'll do the same at the other end. Then I'll take some sticks, lean them up against this one. Then I'll saw these ends off. So this doesn't have to be too pretty. It's mostly just meant to be a survival shelter that you can throw up real quick. I'm not in a survival situation today, but if I were, this is how I would do it. I'll tie each one of those just so they don't shift around too much. First goes the space blanket. Got some duct tape on this lighter for when I need it. Plus it makes a really good fire starter too, if you're in an emergency. Kind of just taping it around these logs. This shelter was developed by Morris Kohansky, a famous bushcraft teacher. And the one I'm making is a little less extreme than his, since it's not gonna be all that cold out here tonight. That's good enough. I'm just gonna put the plastic sheeting right over top of that. And the sides will be open, but I'm going to cinch them shut a little bit, but still let some air in. At the bottom, I'm just going to pile snow on it. I'm hungry. Let's get some snacks. It's already getting dark. I didn't realize how late it was. Got my food bag here. That's where I keep all the goodies. Flatbread. It's very packable. We got some avocado and hummus. Mix this up a little bit. Quick, easy snack. That's good. Little camp snack I highly recommend. I'll save the rest of this for later. All right, so it's getting dark. I'm gonna gather up some kindling, get some logs cut, get a fire going.
So I have the front of the shelter here, and I want to build my fire fairly close to it, probably about one big step away from it. So I want the heat of the fire to radiate inside of that tent pretty good. I want it close, but not too close. Stopped snowing for a while, now it's really coming down. Let's get this fire going. I'm gonna make some feather sticks. So I'm going to use my Blackbeard fire plugs to make fire starting a lot easier. Pull them apart and give that a light. And then these will light the feather sticks. Also, you don't want the wind to be blowing towards your shelter. I've got another log here to throw on. Now we are going to need a lot of firewood. And I gotta cut some pretty big logs too, because I need this fire to last all night long. Alright, so we're going to move the fire. It's a little too far away from the shelter. There we go. This wood is very, very wet, but we'll make it work. Sleeping pad can double as a fire stoker. How about that? Well, I'm going to put these big logs on now, let them start drying out and burning. These big logs, they're going to burn for a very, very long time. Alright, so that should be enough big giant logs. And that shelter is going to heat up just like a greenhouse. And for the sides of the shelter, they were open. I just poked a hole through both sides of the plastic sheeting and tied them off. Or you can use duct tape for that. But you still want to leave a little bit of an air gap just so you're getting fresh air. So let's climb into this thing. Put my sleeping pad back in there. It's probably a little too hot in there now, but I want to see what the temperature is. Wow, it is warm in here. It is like a sauna in here. This Mylar space blanket is reflecting the heat down towards me, and this plastic sheeting is trapping all the heat inside of this thing like a greenhouse. I almost feel like I'm summer camping. All right, I gotta start taking these warm clothes off. The only issue in here is gonna be condensation, but as long as I don't touch the walls, it's not gonna be a big deal. The thermometer is reading 100 degrees in here. There's plenty of fresh air coming in too. I can feel a breeze coming in every now and then, and it feels good. It's not very often I wish for a cool breeze in January. Well, I gotta get out of here and let this fire die down a little bit. So I'm gonna cook some food. I have some Angus dogs I'm gonna cook. You can see there's some condensation here. That should just drip down all the way to the bottom. Let's get a hot dog stick shaved up. That is looking good. Good stuff. All I know is I am going to stay nice and warm tonight. I'm going to have some more of this hummus. All that wood cutting really made me work up an appetite. This is good. So the thermometer is reading just over 30 outside, although I think it's colder than that. Could be because I'm by the fire. Put my wool blanket on. It's nice and warm in here. It's not too hot. Now that the fire died down a little bit. Up high, it's still kind of hot. But down here, it's very comfortable. So it's reading about 65 degrees in here. Now in more extreme conditions, you can build a raised bed and get up higher in one of these shelters where all the hottest air is but it's not cold enough out to justify doing that tonight so i'm gonna go to bed i'll see you guys tomorrow and we'll see how i make it through the night 
It's morning. Fire's still smoldering. It went out for the most part, though. So it stayed nice and warm in here for most of the night. It's a little chilly in here now, though. It's a little over 40 in here. So, still not bad. Halfway through the night, I had to get up and fix the fire a little bit, add a couple more small logs. So, it wasn't a bad night at all. When it was warm in here, it was really nice. So I'm gonna get up and cook some breakfast. I'm gonna fix this fire up a little bit. Get it going again. Well, first things first, I need some coffee. Add some coconut oil. And we're gonna cook an omelet. And add a little salt and pepper. Yeah, we're gonna melt some cheese in there and my Angus dog. And I'll let that coffee come to a boil. That's a good omelet. Coffee's boiling. I'll let that boil for a little bit, about a minute, and then I'll take it off. I'll drop some snow in there to settle the grounds and to cool it off a little bit. Best part of the morning, the coffee. So, it was a good shelter. It only really got chilly in there in the morning when the fire died down, but it was still around 40 degrees in there, so it wasn't too bad. In more extreme cold, I would have gathered a lot more logs, made sure that the fire stayed burning well all night long. I'm gonna be trying to do more camping, long form content like this. That's what a lot of you have wanted, so that's what I'm gonna try and do. So, subscribe for more videos and join me next time. Thanks for watching.